Good morning or afternoon. Thanks for having me here. And I'm excited to be talking to you about analyzing implementations of Harvard Root of Trust. So my name is Trujillo, and I'll start with a little bit about me. I started with a Bachelor of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Olin College of Engineering. So that's where I learned the basics of engineering on a variety of topics, except for security, which I'm very interested in. And that leads me to pursue a PhD at University of Connecticut, where I worked on a variety of side channel attacks and cryptography. That is also where I became one of the first grad students to be hired by the Comcast Center of Excellence for Security and Innovation. And that provides me with the first hand or the first time I had a perspective of how security is used in the real world. And it turns out to be very different from the academia because in the academia, you get to set your own stage. You get to say, assuming A, B, and C. And if you have hardware or tools, one, two, three, then you have this perfect solution. But that is only about 30% of the process. You also have to consider the cost, the implementation, the logistics, the performance, the deployment, and all these other factors. And I want to work on, thing, work on how to make security accessible, practical, and convenient. So that's where I decided to go into industry and became a security and security R&D engineer at Comcast. So as a security R&D engineer, part of my job is to also collaborate with the universities to work on research that can be applied to various issues within the industry. And one of those projects is subject of today's presentation. So there are a lot of open challenges in security, and one of them is trustworthy computing. A core technical constraint for that is to guarantee trust or making computing behave as per expectation. And people do that by using hardware root of trust. And hardware root of trust can mean different things to different people. Some people refer to it as a set of keys that they use or a microprocessor chip or a platform. And so we want to unify that. We reached out to a hardware root of trust professor and collaborated to research and come up with a way to evaluate the hardware root of trust. So our definition is that it is an immutable component that can securely store authentication artifacts and is unconditionally trusted against a well-defined third model. So the component can refers to keys with hardware protection, to processors or crypto engine. And typically when you look at the different hardware root of trust on the market, they talk about what set of attack they protect against. And for the engineers that actually uses it, some of them are not familiar with security. They just assume that when they see it, it protects against everything, they protect against everything. And they are more concerned about performance or complexity and cost. And so for us, we came up with a framework for analyzing the implementations of root of trust in hardware across three different dimensions. So the first and most, imp most important is a security analysis. We begin by establishing the security properties that must be addressed by a hardware root of trust and identify threat vectors that violates these security properties. Then we determine the capabilities that protects against these threat vectors. And once we do the security analysis to get a comprehensive view, we then look at the performance overhead and the implementation cost. So there are two properties that all hardware root of trust must satisfy. Confidentiality, which means no unauthorized access. And this can be done via isolation, which can be spatial or temporal. And it can be done via seeding, where you're only decrypting under specific conditions with valid key. It also must satisfy the integrity property, which means it guarantees the originality of the critical asset that is not modified by a malicious entity. This can be done via attestation or proof of authenticity. And it's usually done at initialization, but may also be done dynamically. So aside from these properties, the different hardware root of trust also have slightly different threat models. So the threat model refers to a set of attack on any hardware resources used to store, transmit, or process critical asset. The critical assets can be the code, 
the data or the key to be protected. And it is considered compromised if any entity is able to expose, alter, disable, destroy, steal, or make unauthorized access or use of the asset. So the setup attack can be separated into physical and software. For physical attack, it refers to things like expo uh, probing exposed pins on target like DRAM, bus, or processor, or side channel attack where you are observing using dedicated equipments, the side channel leakage like thermal or electromagnetic wave. And based on those information, you can infer data on the cryptographic algorithm or the key. And for the software attack, that refers to compromised privileged software or exposed bugs in third-party applications to make unauthorized access. So this can be remote attacks like targeting DRAM or core or firmware attack, hypervisor attack, or side channel attacks. So software side channel attacks such usually look at things like timing of the operation and doesn't have a hardware target. And depending on which hardware root of trust you look at, they usually protects you against a subset of this threat model. But one thing is that all hardware root of trust must have these three different capabilities. It must have isolation, encryption, and seeding. So for isolation, they can implement it via hardware isolation. That can be spatial or temporal. So spatial refers to partition hardware resources so that only the critical assets can access it. And temporal refers to having specific time slot where only the critical asset can use the hardware. And for memory isolation, that means dedicated memory allocation. And the hardware root of trust muscle must also have the encryption capability. So that can be a cipher engine, which is a hardware module that encrypts plain text or critical assets. So it does not provide any useful info to the attacker, even if the assets are compromised. It also includes a storage of private keys. For some hardware root of trust solutions, they're not responsible for any operations like encryption and they're only responsible for generation and storage of private or derived keys. And lastly, the capability they must have seeding. So that means secure storage for storage of keys or hashes or whatever security components that the hardware root of trust is responsible for. Or you can do it via secure boot, which allows on-chip attestation of firmware, OS, and applications using hashes. So the different hardware root of trust implements these three capabilities differently. And based on those differences, that also, refer, that also results in different performance degradation. So when we're looking at performance, we look at both the setup and runtime. For setup, that refers to context switch and boot time, which are more important for assets that have to be turned on and off frequently. And we also look at runtime, which refers to encryption and key generation. So they are more important for assets that runs continuously. And aside from performance, we also look at the implementation cost. Although most of the costs come from hardware, the hardware root of trust also requires software pieces embedded alongside the hardware. And the cost of those should also be taken into consideration. So depending on which solution you choose, it might require core modification, dedicated line on the bus, extra coprocessor or temper-proof component on the chip. And for the supporting software, you might need verification, modification to the operating system, or you might have to create new APIs to help integrate the hardware root of trust. So that's a list of all the factors across three dimensions that we look at for analysis. And next, we use FAITH to evaluate the security, performance, and the implementation cost of four popular hardware root of trust solutions. So some of them are actually trusted execution environment that contains or uses hardware root of trust elements for uh, elements, right? So as I'm going through the description, you can probably pick out the capabilities that they have. The Intel SGX, for example. It has a separate mode with spatially isolated memory encrypted by the memory encryption engine. The encryption and authentication keys are accessible to the memory encryption engine only. And for the ARM trust zone, 
Instead of booting into a separate mode, it has a parallel secure mode that runs next to the normal mode via hardware isolation built into the CPU. So this includes a secure boot sequence that verifies secure boot images, and it authenticates it using uh, public and private keys. Then we have the NXP trust architecture. So this is an isolated environment at processor core, interconnects, and memory level. It uses a secure acceleration engine for generation and storage of keys and hashes. And the last one is kind of a fun one because this is for virtual machines. So it encrypts the memory of virtual machines. It consists of a secure coprocessor and a cipher module. And from the description of those, you can see that they all include the three capabilities that hardware root of trust mass satisfy, the isolation, the sealing, and the encryption. But they all implement them differently. And that also means that they protect against a different subset of the attacks. So when we're doing the performance uh, security analysis, we can see that when you list out all the physical and software attacks, actually none of the hardware root of trust considers side channel attack, which is a relatively new class of attack compared to the others. But if you look at it, the ARM trust zone, for example, it focuses on protection for the software threats, but doesn't offer any protection for the physical threats. While the NXP trust layer offers full or partial protection against pretty much across board. Now, why is that? Well, that's because the NXP trust layer have many more components than the other solutions. It includes secure world, encryption engine, secure boot, and temper monitor, while the other solutions only have two, enclave and secure and encryption engine, or they might have secure coprocessor and encryption engine. And that also means that the NXP trust layer have a high setup time and runtime when you add everything together. So high in here means more than 50% performance degradation, low means less than 50%, and none means zero degradation. So depending on what assets you have, performance to you might be of uttermost priority. And you might already have other countermeasures in place for physical threats or software threats. So in this case, you might not need all the bells and whistles that the trust layer offers. And you might choose one of the other hardware root of trust that have less performance degradation to implement. And aside from that, we also need to consider the software and hardware cost. So your asset might be legacy devices that's been out there for 10 years or 20 years, or it might be software, or it might be IoT devices that have a lot of constraints in terms of memory and size. So in this case, you might place more importance on the software and hardware costs. And you can see that the NXP trust layer have high software costs and high hardware costs, while the Intel SGX have low costs across the board. So low means that the number of components does not exceed 50% line or area in comparison to the normal module without the hardware root of trust capability and high means more than 50%. And so that's basically a comparison of the four different hardware root of trust. From that, you can see that they have different threat models and they use different capabilities to defend, which results in differences in performance and cost. And by using this FAITH framework, it allows us to reason about distinct hardware root of trust implementations in terms of security, performance, and cost. I end with an image from my favorite nerdy shirt website, wood.com. So a lot of the time people say you can't compare apple to oranges and all the different hardware root of trust are so different. How do you compare them? Well, first of all, you have to think about what are the different criteria you must satisfy and think about which ones are more important to you and prioritize and analyze accordingly because what's best for others might be different from what is best, what best fits your need in terms of the asset you're looking at and what kind of countermeasures you already have in place. Does anybody have any questions? I know what Puff is. So the question, I was wondering if you have experiences with Puff. So I know what Puff is, but I have not worked closely with it. 
Is there any specific detail you're looking at? Or So puff is physical unclonable function. And as far as I know, that is basically, or in this case, it refers to kind of a hardware component that's also similar to hardware root of trust. So are you ladies working in hardware or security or what made you interested in this presentation? Oh, that works. Swarm sensors on automated system, autonomous system. I actually don't know about that. That's interesting. Mobile app developer. That's cool. Yeah, mobile security becoming increasingly important, especially nowadays, a lot of the things are moving from, well, a lot of things move from PC to laptop and now from laptop to mobile. Yes, and the pandemic makes everyone mobile and remote. So network security is another interesting area. Secure mobile device for people working from home. Yep, help secure the enterprise they're connecting to. Thank you for attending. Enjoy your day and stay safe.